Well, hello there. Today we're going to look at the Neural Amp Modeler. We might try uh, actually modeling something, maybe a pedal, but at the very least, we're going to look at the plugin, try it out with some stuff downloaded from the internet. Who has used the Neural Amp Modeler? Bass Blom has used it. Will has used it. Could you guys guide me through making my own model? Uh, that would be helpful. I was just looking at the instructions and I'm a little overwhelmed with Python script and stuff. Google collab thing. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, so who's here today? We've got Danny, Paul, Will, Synchrotron, Zach, Jason's here, Bass Bomb's here, RT is here. I think that's everyone. If, if I missed anyone, just say hi in the chat. Thank you all for being here. Yeah, I'm not feeling too great. Actually worse than last week. I was complaining about my feeling bad last week. I did two weeks off of intermittent fasting, just eating whenever I wanted, eating breakfast. And I didn't feel better <laughs> doing that. So I went back on intermittent fasting. It's the first week. Plus I'm tracking calories. Plus I'm doing a workout every day. And I feel awful. This is worse. <laughs> I also just need a vacation. So I was thinking since this is week 25 in a row of doing the stream, I will actually take next week off. So no stream next Friday, but probably back on after that. It's also the, uh, the first day off for my kids from school, it's the start of their summer vacation. So I'm going to take that day off and, uh, we'll catch up week after. Cool. And news for music production and stuff. I actually can't think of anything that's that's happened this week. I haven't bought any new gear this week, surprisingly. Showed you guys that I got this, the Volca sample. I was using this this lens, this vintage lens, on the the stream last week. When I was editing, it was looking really blurry, like dreamy Vaseline on the lens sort of thing. I forgot to wipe off the inside element of the the lens uh satala 2 was awesome news cool yeah a lot of people are on the fence of updating um it's not a, f a free update so yeah obviously think twice about it but for 20 dollars, i want to see them continue developing that plugin uh, i know that jason updated um several others but a lot of people are saying i'm not <laughs> i'm not updating because it just because it's paid they only use Satawa because it's free. And that's fine. You can keep using Satawa 1. A lot of ease of use features for sure. And it's definitely bought to support the decomposer. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy to support them. They they release this plugin that's just incredibly useful, easy to learn, easy to use. Yeah, they had it for free for four years. I think that's wonderful. Um, if that actually costs them like hundreds of thousands of dollars, like they said on the website, then like it makes sense to to ask for some support some not donations but like add new features charge for our support synchrotron says i've not been getting dropouts and glitches as such but sometimes when i'm recording a 10 minute drone i get the odd click as though someone has turned something on in the house that could be a thing um if you're not using not surge protection but um like a, a voltage isolator or power conditioning is there something you can get a conditioner that plugs into a wall socket that powers my studio? Yes. I want to show you mine, but I don't know if I can. Hang on a sec. Okay, so at my desk, the bottom rack is a power conditioner. It's just a basic one. I got it used. Um, I used to have one from Samson that was very good. That's just sort of basic filtering and distribution. Um, but I want to show you one other thing, but I have to walk away from the microphone to show you. Okay, sorry for the shaky camera. That is a like an isolation transformer. It's made by Triplight. It has four outlets on the back. It has these relays that will click when different power surges or dropouts happen in the the in the house wiring. So this I hear it click not too often in this place. In my old house, it was going pretty frequently. If the blender runs, you hear it click. If the vacuum runs, you hear it click. 
yeah, just things in the neighborhood will make it click and my audio doesn't glitch. I, my computer doesn't shut off from things like that. It's rock solid. Triple eight IS 500. It very well could be. It's similar to that. It's very similar to that more budget friendly thing. Maybe $150. I don't think it was even that much. Uh, LC 1200, possibly. I think I got it here. No, it's a smaller version of this. Yeah, if you've got some dodgy power in your house, bad ground, stuff like that, this will protect you. So, uh, well, not really from bad ground, but it'll, when you plug it in, it will tell you right away if it's bad ground and if there's any sort of uh, dropouts, it protects. It's great. I guess it's called a line conditioner and they come in various like wattage. I don't know exactly which one it is, but I didn't spend, I don't think I spent $300 on it and I got it in Canada. So um, it, it's super nice to just know that, you know, just plug it in and, and, and you know that everything's protected. And once in a while you hear the, the relay click and you're like, oh, thank you. You're doing your job. I think a battery backup is another possible thing to use. Uh, people are talking about Furman um, power conditioners. Yeah. Monster ones are good as well if you can find them on deal. The The thing is you want something that actually has filtering in it, not just distribution. If you've got the uh, isolation line conditioner and then you just have distribution, then that's fine. I've got everything plugged into that basically in kind of different circuits from that. You've got a Furman AC215A for studio monitors. Let me just look that up. I don't have any hum or anything in in this uh studio so um lucky with that cool so it's just two outlets a way to protect your monitors i i like that hey it's even on sale right now uh samson ps9 yeah the actual power conditioner i have is a one from middle atlantic and i think i only got it because i saw it on a used website very cheap i had to replace the plug on it because uh, it was from a like a live sound production company or something like that. Some installation work got damaged and they just get rid of it. But after that, it's it's been great. Battery backups, you probably want to get a pure sine wave out, output UPS for audio purposes, probably. But I, I don't know much about that. So today we're looking at Neural Amp Modeler. This is a free, kind of like a Kemper profiler. It has this neural network system that can model amplifiers. There's a lot of amplifiers that you can download already, but this is the plugin. This is what it looks like. Very basic interface, input and output controls. There's a built-in noise gate. There's a built-in through band EQ, very basic stuff. And then you have the model to select and uh, you can also add in an impulse response. The model is always active and there's a toggle here for turning on and off the impulse response. And of course the impulse response is your guitar cabinet. So from what I can tell from quick research on this stuff, things like the Kemper profiling amp, things like neural amp modeler, they can do modeling of amplifiers, distortion, saturation, that sort of thing, where impulse responses can only do linear processes like filters and reverb. This is kind of the best of both worlds because you've got that impulse response loader built in. I am somewhat skeptical that this will work, also kind of excited because it's a new, I mean, it's a new free tool to play with for great guitar tones, allegedly. So let's go over to the website. I think this is a brand new website. It's very sparse right now. Uh, but the main thing that if you're just a user, you want to play with this, click on the play button and then you get the download link here. So Windows installer or Mac installer. You can also download it directly from GitHub, but this is probably all you need. Then you need some sort of thing to actually play with. So we're gonna go to tonehunt.org. And this is also a new website where users are sharing amps, pedal captures, impulse responses, stuff like that. So let's look for a, a Mesa rectifier or something like that. Single rectifier, lots of details about how this was created, what is involved, they're saying, NAM does an incredible job of it to uh, capturing it. Not all of the downloads are this detailed, 
This is just a random one that I picked live as we're recording this. So um, I'm going to download that, put it in my downloads folder, extracted it, and then I'm going to copy it over to my NAM profiles folder uh, where I will paste it. Let's head over to the plugin. We need to select a model. We're going to hit this folder icon and go to my music folder, my impulse responses folder, and then my NAM profiles folder. You need to create this once you start downloading stuff. Let's just take this Mesa Boogie. Let's go with modern G1. Next, we need a cabinet. So we're going to go to here and I'm going to go to my guitar cabinets folder and I'll just take these classic catharsis awesome time. Um, let's do S press high. I'm going to grab my guitar. I'll be right back. This is a solar, whatever it is, <laughs> GC 1.6 TAW. It's tuned to drop C. Connected to the Arturia Audio Fuse, um, Hi-Z input number one, and I'm going to switch to headphones now. Here's my, my first play through this amp. Input level seems good. I just want a little more gain. I'm guessing that these G numbers here are the different gain settings. So G1 up to 10. So red, modern, G1. Let's go up to G5. Maybe a little less bass. Gains all the way down on the interface. Cool. So that's the red modern. Let's go with the red raw. And vintage is all on G5. I like that one a little bit more. I want to try this normalized thing. Hopefully it doesn't get really loud. Actually a little quieter. Seems pretty good, actually. Uh, CPU load at 64 samples is 0.8% on a Mac Studio M1 Max processor. Zero latency. So this is this is running really well. I'm going to risk it and try going down to 32 samples and see if this is even you know still possible. I am also running an aggregate audio device, which is not recommended. Just for science, could we hear the clean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so clean, let's do clean on the G5. And uh, if you meant clean as in, what's the DI? I don't like it. I'm already surprised. I'm shocked. That's good. Let's go with the clean channel. Gain full. Yeah, this like clean at 10 is is much better than like the modern at gain 1. That's similar to maybe G4. So it's a more of a scooped sound. 
Uh, let's do pushed. We haven't tried that one yet. Let's do pushed one. Sounds more like the DI. Uh, let's do pushed G5. So this is the uh, Mesa Boogie Single Rectifier 50. It comes with 100 models. Good starting point. Now, since this is actually pretty low CPU, let's see if we can add in a second one and um, get in like a Tube Screamer. Could go with this Extreme Metal Pack, but let's just see if there's specifically the like a one pedal. So I'm gonna do copy, paste. Don't want two of those. Drive zero, tone nine, level nine. Drive 10, tone nine. Cabinet off since it's gonna go before the amp. Okay, I didn't like changing sizes, but now it's okay. Turn the EQ off, normalize off. And then here we're gonna do the clean G7. I dig it. It may not come through the recording uh, of this, but it feels really good. It feels, it, it seems quite responsive. I will try um, with the volume knob. So the volume knob is just barely up. It's about halfway. There is some noise, but it's fairly subtle. Normalize brings the noise down, but let's try the gate. Let's try the gate before the Tube Screamer. So yeah, I need it at like minus 56. Yes, I know amps have real, real amps have real noise. This is a free plugin with free real amp models. So people have taken their, in this case, a Tube Screamer, TS9 pedal, in this case, a Mesa Boogie solo rectifier and made a hundred profiles for just people to play with. I didn't even check the different um, power tubes that they switched out. So this is the clean uh, with a gain at seven with 6L6. Let's go to the clean G7 EL34. Tube Screamer turned off. G7 and G7. So it's more open, higher headroom, higher output with the 6L6. EL34s compress more. Uh, where is that one? It's a, it's a more compressed, tighter. Having spent all that cash on Amplitude 5, S-Gear, Plugin Alliance, I should have known that the future might arrive before properly using any of them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff is still good. A new thing doesn't take away from something that's already good, especially with analog audio. I think there's still room for real pedals, real amps, real cabinets, all this stuff, because playing in headphones sucks. This is at least an option to get something for free that gives you a lot of options. Not the world's best workflow. There's a lot of menu diving. There's a lot of, of going through Finder or Explorer to, to import your impulse responses. Maybe that will improve. 
Like this doesn't have like a library that comes directly with it. It's a lot of extra steps. Love to know the process for modeling amps a bit better. This is making me want to get into it now. Yeah, we need to go over to the GitHub. Um, I got here through the contributors link, I think it is. The trainer link. So this is the trainer. This is how you create your own neural network training of your amplifier or pedal. They want you to use this um, Google Collab thing, which looks like this. I don't want to read all this out, but <laughs> it's probably the only way I'll learn it. This notebook allows you to train a neural amp model based on a pair of input output wave files that you have the amp you want to model. Steps one, get your data. Step two, installation. Three, enter metadata. Four, train. Check the results and download your model. Easy mode takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Download the capture signal. Download the file. Reamp your gear you want to model using it. Save the reamp as output.wave. Please use 48, 24 bit mono. Support other sample rates, et cetera, in the future and upload. What are we going to reamp? Let's do the bass driver DI, the MXR bass driver DI. A great pedal. So it's plugged in. It's not direct monitoring. That's important. I'm going to make a new track. I'm going to import the sound file, which is probably, yeah, it looks real awful. So we don't want to hear it, so we're going to turn off master, uh, master Send. I'm going to use the Reinsert plugin. In this case, I'm going Sending on 8 at 3, and then None, and Returning on Mic Line Input 2. Let's see if it's actually going through. My 8 at's not monitoring. That's fine. I think this is all set up. The music on. And uh, do they consider it modeling or profiling, or is it something different? I don't know if there's a difference, but there's a specially designed sound file. Well, we've heard that it sounds pretty good. Whatever it, it's doing, it sounds a lot better than a lot of the plugins that I've used. This should capture dynamics and uh, EQ, saturation all those sorts of things. They didn't say anything about like volume levels, things like that. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kind of like pick a setting and hopefully it doesn't like clip and stuff. Actually, let's set up a, a new track to capture it. I guess it doesn't have to come back on the same track. I'll set it to none. So it's gonna send out of that track and then I'll just record it on this track. This is probably not the absolute best way to do it. And again, we don't want to hear what's happening. But this is just an easy way to send something out and record on a new track. I don't know why I'm nervous. Why am I nervous about this? Okay, levels seem way too low. So I'm just going to adjust that. Let's say that this is my favorite sound. This would allow me to just call that up in a plugin rather than have to like go through my photos to find the exact settings that I used some other time on a different song. Um, or like perfectly preserve the settings should allow me to just reuse my pedals in a more convenient way. So this file is three minutes long, but if you have any questions, I'll be looking at the chat right now. It's funny to see so many versions of the Boss Metal Zone pedal on that site. Yeah, I mean, everyone's just looking for one that sounds good, I think. What happens if you try training it after running it through delay or some other time-based effects. I am pretty sure that time-based effects won't work, but I don't know for sure. Impulse response is, is the more classic way of capturing time-based effects, but you don't get saturation dynamics characteristics ab about it, just EQ and, um, and time. So you gotta run it with every different control setting that you would wanna change. Those are the settings I'm using for our first trial. By the way, Reaper is uh, has flickered its its uh, transport bar a couple times. Oh wait, I'm supposed to call this output.wave. 
item setting, item properties, and we're going to rename this file out put.wave. Install NAM into this collab instance by running the next cell. Hover over and click the play button that appears in the upper left corner. Okay, pressing play. Run anyways. Okay, it's doing stuff. I didn't press the upload, I missed that. Upload the input DI and output AMP files you want to use by clicking the folder icon on the left. Can I just drag and drop? All right, so this upload is gonna take a little while. Will it morph between them or you save separate patches? You, okay, so I'll show you in the, in the plugin what it looks like. Um, so you've got this drop down menu with each of the profiles, models that you've created. So this, when we downloaded for the uh, Mesa Boogie, had a hundred. So that person set it up the way that they like to set it up, I guess with the EQ flat. And then they just changed 10 different gain settings. And then this amp has a bunch of different, got the red and green plus clean, pushed, modern and raw and vintage uh, sort of um, amp settings. All right, so it looks like it's about halfway complete on the upload. Let's look for more, more um, pedals. I did download the Tectony One VT bass. Let's actually do that. Let's just turn the cabinet off. And we'll go switch over to bass. I actually don't know what the VT bass does, if it's just a preamp or if it has sort of a cab modeling. VT bass pedal. Okay, so it looks like the upload is, is done. Well, I'm going to hit play on this. Does that sound like a amp and cab to you? I can't tell. There are speaker emulations. Okay. Kind of cool. Yeah, I was trying, but <laughs> I forgot the rest. Puts a bit low on this one. Yeah, this is free and it's it's a a profile player. So we are training a neural network as we're doing this. Is it done? Uh, this, so, okay. Want us to do metadata, fine. This is a MXR base DI plus M AV type. Uh, let's probably overdrive. I actually didn't play through it. So I don't know. Of the exact same settings that I had, 
Did I forget to put the distortion on? Maybe. I think I per forgot to train it with the distortion on. So this is the settings that you're hearing right now. Which is just the bass. So we're getting this color switch. I forgot to press this button. So we'll have to train it again. So this is the target sound that we're going for. To A, B on the, um, the output of this thing. Training will go through 100 epochs and take just over 10 minutes. If you want a better model, you can try training with more epochs. Just put in different number before hitting go. Okay, well, I don't know. We'll just hit train and, and see. Model ain't getting trained. I don't know what this means. Something wrong with the reamp. What does this mean? Sounds a little bit longer. And then the other thing might be that... Um, yeah, there's an offset. I mean, I'll try normalizing as well. Try again. Okay, it's uh, uploaded. Back to step four. Let's try this again. So it's on uh, 14 of 100. Maybe I should go make my lunch. Yeah, I'm going to start warming up my lunch, and uh, I'll just let this run. You guys keep an eye on it, all right? Look what I found. Okay, um, what are we at? 44%. I will summarize the process when we get to the end of this, once we have some conclusions. We can go step by step. I think they have done a very good job of explaining this. And it's kind of self-explanatory that like, yeah, your, your output file should be similar to this. But I did do three different things. I normalized it, I shifted the timing, and I trimmed the end. So three different things, but one of those things made a difference. So I guess this is making, it's taking the input signal, taking the output signal, and then it's doing things to create like a circuit that would reduce or produce the desired output. And it's gonna try a hundred different versions of that until it gets one that's the closest. Is that making sense? Is that what it does? Something like that. I think they've made a really interesting community. People testing this this plugin or, or this, uh, you know, the modeling thing. This being free and open source is really interesting. And uh, yeah, so many people sharing. Dark Glass Alpha Omega Ultra. The most ambitious capture they've done. Yeah, this is one of those like incredibly expensive <laughs> plugins. Or uh, not plugins, uh, pedals. You need the Gollum VST. What is Gollum? Blend a stereo track of two mics on an amp. They did a thousand, a thousand variations. That's crazy. All right, let's check out their video at least. What's going on Nam fam? This is Nathan from Arlington Audio and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up our Dark Glass Alpha Omega Ultra Capture Library in a way that replicates the full functionality of the real thing. As you can tell, I'll be demonstrating this in Reaper. There it is. As we pan to the right... That clean tone is ridiculous. This Gollum pedal or plug-in 
is taking the left and right, summing them to mono, but then keeping it separate so that you can um, control the levels, right? If I if I look closely, I can see that he's got his left and rights hard panned. You've got the track volumes, may as well just use those. It's the same thing if you keep it all in mono. Is there a minimum time limit? I guess you mean on on this? A minimum time to do the uh, the training? I don't know. Download model.nam and exported model from the exported model directory. I don't see that. Oh, there it is. If you want to continue to train this model, you can download the lightning model artifacts from lightning logs. Okay, so click on it, download uh, impulse responses, name profiles. Okay, so we've got our, our model. Load that. I'm not hearing a difference. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> I'm not hearing it do anything. And if I switch to what two, that's what I put into it. Sanity Chuck, let's go to a different. So that's definitely doing something, but it doesn't really. It sounds very flat. I should at least hear the EQ change, shouldn't I? Maybe a little something is happening, but it's not as dramatic as I was expecting. You think we did something wrong? I don't know. It seems, it seems like it worked, but I just, I don't know. Let's do another, I guess, uh, through the distortion tone. Oh, did it loop? Okay, well... I'm going to take this, I'm going to normalize that, sync the start. And then, um, I'm going to remove the output.wave, upload the new one. Okay, uh, run this. It looks like it's working. So let's get one alpha, uh, let's say G7, and then one omega G7. That's the one on the left. the one on the right. It's easy enough to just use track faders. I 
And I'll make one more track with um, just the DI input. Let's try a different amount of distortion. Let's do four and a half. Let's do a third one and let's use that. I did like the VT bass. Free thing called Echo Thief. I could try this one. There's actually a VST plugin I haven't tried yet. $45 for the plugin. But let's say I've got this as a folder and I put in a um, Rhea verb add. This has been a while since I've used it. Add file. And I go to my impulse responses, reverb and effects. Uh, Echo Thief. Actually, none of these are studio ones, are they? Steinman Foundation Recording Suite. bit long but uh I don't know there's some cool stuff in here I found out about these from some contact library and I don't remember which one Model exported to exported models version one. Refresh. Version one. Oh, did it again. Tried that before. Doesn't work. Uh, put this right into the impulse response folder. This is a. Uh, called the dirt one. We're just testing the software. We're not building the final sound at this point. So back to input one, go to this plugin, put in dirt one. Um, Oh, bypassed. Uh, 
that doesn't seem right. Okay, it just needs a bit more input level. Currently, we're hearing Neuralamp Modeler with my <laughs> Base DI Plus. Ignore this. Forget this exists. This seems to just need a little bit more gain. I didn't carefully match the gain. Now I'm plugging into the input of this. So we're going to hear this directly. There seems to be a bit more of the clean blend. Yeah, I don't know. It's different. Better than an impulse response would be, because there actually is some distortion in there. I think I just need to be a lot more careful about setting levels and all that stuff. A being the chain before sending it out. But I think I got the workflow down mostly. I don't think you can be too lazy about it. If you want usable results that are repeatable and yeah, something you can use again and again with the exact same sound as your hardware, then you do need to be careful feel like it's come out pretty positively. I might keep going with this later today and, um, and try a few different settings and see what things make a difference. Uh, definitely the gain setting. I don't know about the EQ. Possibly the blend. Maybe I should just do like a 100% uh, distorted version of it and then uh, one clean blend with and without the different coloration settings. I don't know. Looking at the results, the model is slightly different is showing. This is showing frequency response? No. Yeah? No. Not frequency response. I don't know what this is showing. What is this graph showing? Air signal to noise ratio? This might sound okay, it says. I don't know, maybe I need to do another bunch of, of uh, renders to uh, to get that sounding right but we'll see could record a sample of both and listen to them back to back for comparison yeah i'm wondering if like the settings got changed or if it's just the input level different because i am going through a different chain i'm going through a different converter entirely uh when i'm reamping it so i don't know i just need to be more careful with it i think but it's promising it's not extremely difficult and anyone that has cool pedals amps whatever can model this stuff and all for free even if you don't want to go through the the headache of doing this this stuff just going to the uh tone hunt website and just downloading anything that's interesting i think you're going to enjoy it the next thing i'd like to check out here on the stream is project archiver Project Archiver is a new script aimed at making your project smaller without sacrificing usability. After minimizing the audio files, fades, stretch markers, markers, item envelopes, item play rates, etc. will be kept. And if you used the same part of a media item in multiple places, it will not create duplicate files. It does some pretty impressive minimization. So original folder size, 78.83 gigabytes, minimized files, 61.3, Deleted, 5.19. New size, 12.34 gigabytes. Huge difference in file size after archiving. That's getting rid of unused files, converting to FLAC. And the other thing is trimming out the unused parts of the audio. 
Reaper does have a function kind of in here when you go to save as. There's copy all media in project. And then if you enable this button here, let's say flack and then trim media size, this will have a tail of 300 mill milliseconds. This is something that I have never used and really have probably never even seen it until earlier this week. Someone on the forum in this thread mentioned that function. They didn't realize, the, the creator of this script didn't realize that that was there, but this still solves other problems. It, it does the unused stuff better and it, it kind of collects everything, video files, everything. So that is very cool. Let's, uh, let me just open up a real mix project that I did. So to download and install this script, you need to go to this link here, uh, which is the GitHub raw link for the repack repository. So you're gonna copy that text and go into your extensions menu, repack, import a repository, and paste that in there. Once you synchronize and install it, you've got this oded project archiver.lua. I'm gonna run. And so this will allow us to choose various settings that will uh, compact this project. Remove unused takes, yes. Rem minimize audio files, yes. How is it going to do that? Using padding of one second, sure. Only minimize those file types, uncompressed and lossless, or any are the options there. Let's do, let's minimize any of the lossless files to 24-bit FLAC. Collect external files. We can copy them from the original location or move from the original location. Let's do a copy. If there's video files, it will do that. And if there's resampleMatic 5000 files, it will also do that. So let's see what happens. Backup destination folder must be empty. Oh, I see. Okay, so, so just add in a new folder called like archive or something and then create backup. All right, so the initial copy and move and, and stuff seems pretty fast. Let's have a look at what's actually happening in the, the, the folder. Um, this is, um, looks like a copy of the project file has been made and it's just creating the FLAC files. So it's happening in the audio files folder. There's FLAC files for the minimized files. It's going pretty fast on this computer. And back to Reaper. So the original media folder size was 1.94 gigabytes, minimized files, 999 megabytes, new size, 362 megabytes, total saving of 1.57 gigabytes. That's significant. Does anyone here use FLAC from day to day in Reaper? I don't. There, there is a CPU penalty for using FLAC because it has to be decoded before playback, basically unpacking it on the fly to wave. So I don't, but I have seen some sound designers um, work that way, possibly only when they're, um, they're traveling or something like that. But yeah, you, you definitely could do that. So it looks like um, some of the files, it's pretty much all the entire file being used, except for like the end where it was just silence. And then the the toms, it's it's only used a very small portion of those files. Um, some of the files here, like this electric piano, was only used three quarters of the way through the file or through the project. Let's find where that is. That's that's these files right here. These pianos are silent the entire um, rest of the song, so it's it's basically cropped those files and turned them from 68 megabytes to 3.86 megabytes. Pretty cool that it, that it can do this. Um, the toms are only used for 7% of the song. So yeah, super useful. If you, if you have a lot of projects, they're taking up a lot of space and you wanna finally archive them. I think this is a fantastic way of actually doing this. So here's the, um, here's the archive folder. This is what it looks like. I've got my, project file and then inside there's all the FLAC files and you can recreate this session from those FLAC files. If you want WAV files from these, like FLAC, if you don't know, FLAC is just another lossless compression. It's kind of like zipping each file. It makes it smaller. It doesn't 
throw away any data. It just re-encodes it in a, in a lossless way. Unlike MP3, which would throw away audio quality. So very, very cool. Um, highly recommend this. This is a new script, but useful. Um, I'll put a link in the chat right now to the forum post where you can get all the details. And if you find any bugs or anything, report them there. Now, the other thing worth checking out today is Cephillian's Project Underrun Monitor. On the forum, I found this post from him. Cephillian is, is the person that created Repack, so he's very well trusted in the community. Um, and he's made this monitor that will put in markers in your project whenever you run into a, a media or audio underrun. So wait, little clicks and crackles and things like that. Um, it will put in markers in your project when those things occur. So um, I'm going to run this. I don't know if we're actually going to hear an issue. I should actually mute this project. If I jump around, the first time I played it, it did get one. It's responding pretty well. The more PDC you have, the more, uh, the lower your buffer size, all those sorts of things, that will impact the, um, you know, the stability of, of the project. Let me put this down to a 64, no, 32 sample buffer. I don't know, turn off anticipative effects. And let's just see it, like, there we go. So, yeah, constant, constant crackles that way. Don't set your project that way. Okay, but if it's just a 32 sample buffer, and I jump around, there is, there are some uh, audio underruns. Um, okay, so I'm assuming that we're we're good again. Yeah, trying to force my CPU to to uh, underrun is probably what happened there. That should be fun to edit. Davi in the chat had a good suggestion. Good for podcasters. Yes, uh, have this running in the background while you're doing your recording, and these markers could pop up and indicate where there might be a, a click that you need to draw out or something like that or just give you an indication that this audio recording didn't happen perfectly. Because um, Reaper doesn't stop whenever there's some sort of dropout. CPU or uh, can't get audio off the disk fast enough, those sorts of things. So this can be a helpful tool. Not a whole lot else to say about that. With vinyl recording, I don't think it would help in that situation where the crackles are happening in the actual record the crackles aren't caused by Reaper, your audio interface, or playing back the media. It's part of the physical disk. Because I said that there's a, a CPU penalty for playing back FLAC files, let's measure that. Let's see what that difference actually is. Run background projects is off. So here is the wave version. I'll play it from marker four. CPU is pretty high. It's 30%. That is because we're running at 128 buffer. There's 84 effects in this project. So quite a lot. 31.1 uh, CPU. Let's go over to the FLAC version. This is interesting. So I'm getting confused by this because after the archive process, or the conversion to FLAC, the file names are still there. Like the original file names are there. You can see this says .wave. But if I go to source properties, I can see that this is actually a FLAC file. So my only suggestion for this script to, to solve that problem is to just rename all the media to their source uh, at the end. So um, marker four, playing back. It's actually pretty much the same. So. 29, 30%. This one, if I go to one of these files and source properties. Yeah, this is 24 bit wave. Playing this back. Actually, about the same. So 
Maybe I'm a liar. Uh, Davi, I mentioned, I mentioned that earlier today when we first started playing with the guitar. I tried matching Gwen's settings. I tried worse settings and potentially better settings. And I could not get Reaper to be as sort of crackly as his. I wasn't getting as many audio buffer issues as him. Like very rarely, sometimes just the first frame of playback. But I, I went from being able to play at 128 samples on guitar down to 32 samples, and it was pretty solid. It's hard to say what the issue is with his system. He's tried a, a bunch of different interfaces. Maybe he's going through hubs. That wasn't mentioned in, in the video. He wasn't mentioning like the actual CPU load, other software that's running, any of that stuff. So I kind of have an idea of what it might be, but it could just be a combination of things. A Reaper setting, maybe some device is behaving poorly. But basically, I matched his settings because I have the same system as him. M1 Max, Max Studio. I was getting great performance at 32 samples. But I don't have the exact same plugins. That, that was one thing. Uh, one thing that, that is different. One little quick thing. A tip that I received this week that uh, potentially can save a lot of CPU in your projects has to deal with Amplitude 5. There's this known bug where you can actually cut the CPU in half. Coming over to Reaper, let's bring in Amplitude Amplitude 5. And right here, if we are looking at this CPU load, it's showing about 2%. I'm at a, um, I'm running 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, and 128 samples. So if I'm actually playing guitar, I'll probably want this at 32 samples. 2.25 when the project's not playing, when there's nothing even running. So check this out. If I hit this uh, dual channel mode or the, the split signal option and then go back to the single track, CPU load has dropped by a full percent. Went from 2.25 down to 1. 1. 1.6 at the most, hovering around 1%. So there's this stupid bug in, in Amplitude where the first time you open the plugin, you have to switch to this dual amp mode and then switch back to the single amp mode. I don't know why it's like that. I didn't seem to see any difference with, uh, with muting or bypassing these. But yeah, it seems to load this in the background and then switch to this view. And just looking at this now, it's lowered even further under 1%. It's probably not going to go any lower than that, but that's potentially a very useful thing if you've got a few instances of Amplitude in your projects. Like I usually do, I usually have two to six of these in a project, and I don't usually freeze them. You know, dropping that down to 6% CPU instead of 12 makes a big difference. Okay, I want to give credit to the person that gave me that tip. That was Jinotes... Uh, on the Reaper forum. That's who I got the tip from this week, and it's it's helpful. Hey Alex, how's it going? You said that my Space Echo sounds hi-fi. I don't think it does. I don't think it does at all. Let me get this run through here. It can do some pretty interesting, like, analog distortion. I broke it. It's not very clean, really.
Yeah, to me, it's it's very, very dark, lo-fi sounding. But at the same time, it sounds great. Like, it's, it's just so good. Okay, so... You only get pops and crackles when you open the MIDI editor window. So let me show you this setting here. Preferences audio buffering. Disable media buffering for tracks with open media editors. Make sure that that is checked. I've seen that make a big difference. Alex, is there anything you want to know about the RE150, like certain sound going into it? or This one has six modes. There's three single modes for the different um, tape heads. Like, like, you know how it, how it is. So, slowest. Uh, second, slow. Oh, this is the slowest head. Or longest distance between heads. And it's pretty dark sounding. Um, mode four is half a second or so. And then mode six is both of those. And then the same settings on um, on the feedback loop head. Same heads with a feedback loop. With the different inputs and outputs on this, you can do things like put in a chorus pedal or a flanger or something in between the different inputs and, and feed it back in an interesting way. I did that on a stream probably like end of last year. I mean, the size of that thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking to Vulture Culture. Check out his channel. He had a stream this week with the uh, RE501, I think it was. Chorus Echo. The very last space echo that Roland made. Um, not counting the pedal version, which I don't really like. I don't really like the pedal version. It's It's just not the same. And none of the plugins are this dark, right? Big difference in the tone. That's a single echo mode. It's just a really nice decay on that. I'm going to push the input a little bit higher. All the way up. Check out the video on the RE501. Awesome stream. Really great stream this week. Yeah, so I've got the RD6 um, low tom output triggering the Mavis. The Mavis is going to the Space Echo.
So you can make lots of fun sounds with that. Oh, Alex, I also wanted to show you the, um, the, uh, Volca sample that I set up with your sounds, like I said I would. Uh, <laughs> well, I did let my son play with this, so. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, memory, one, two. I actually think, let me load up track four. So this is a sequence of four patterns using your samples. It's honestly pretty fun. I want to do a video about all the things you can do with the Volca sample. If you hold any of these steps and then turn one of these knobs here in the gray section, that setting will apply only to that step. Otherwise, it applies globally for the things that aren't set per step. So there's, automa there's step automation for all these parameters, like sample start, length, and then there's hidden parameters for the the speed can also be uh, notes, like semitone shifted. What do you call it? Uh, there's a delay start. So that's all super cool. Um, there's, uh, when you're not chaining patterns, there's a uh, mute. There's a mute and a solo. There's a lot to learn. It's it's a very it's feature packed. It's it's really it's really great. So if I hold down uh, function and then turn the knob, it's a little awkward to to play, but I can go in semitone. I can go in semitones. And I can record. And I think I can do clear. And I'll go back to where it was. Oh, it's a lot more powerful than I expected. And I can sync it up with the, uh, the RD6. And things like that. Oh, it's not plugged in. <laughs> it. What am I doing? What am I doing here? Set the trigger mode to that one. Hopefully that, that's clear what's happening here. I'm using the RD6 clock for the Volca sample. I could do it opposite, so sync in to sync out here. And then I set this one to trigger. There is like an auto on off thing, but I, I don't know all the functions of it. It's at least getting the tempo automatically.
that's what I've been working on this week. It's pretty fun stuff. I haven't done anything with the Poly D and the Space Echo yet, but that's that's the natural next step. We are just about done for the day. Clearly in the uh, playing with toys section of the stream. It just suddenly got loud. I don't know. There's a terrible camera angle for you, but I switched away around the way that it was connected. So I'm going out of the headphone into the, the mixer now. Instead of going from the headphone out to the external input. So now the main output goes to the external input for the feedback loop. Yeah, that's a terrible camera angle. Yeah, as predicted, it's a great combination. Of course, how could it not be? Dark Echoes, I love it. Thank you so much for joining me for the live stream today. Hope you've had fun, hope you learned something. Uh, this will be split up into a couple different videos probably and a, a recap for next Thursday. Reminder that there's no stream next week. It's going to be the week after. I would like to continue doing weekly streams. I just need a vacation. I will see you in two weeks, if not in a video before then. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't do this without you. I would be talking to myself alone if it wasn't for you. So, see you guys later. <laughs> Support on Patreon. Give the video a like. And uh, see you in two weeks in the next live stream.